On the 22nd of May, 1906, members of the Imperial German Navy met to discuss the final decisions for the new cruiser, and this would be Grosse Cruiser E-1906, and the Kaiser would approve this vessel on the 21st of June that year. This would end up becoming the Blucher. A few weeks before the Kaiser approved Blucher's final design, on the 31st of May, 1906, the Germans learned of the new British project, which would eventually become HMS Invincible. Blucher, in its own respect, was an evolution in the armored cruiser design, which Blucher would end up becoming the final armored cruiser Germany would construct, but the introduction of Invincible only hastened the Germans' concerns about future naval issues, as they had already been eyeing down the Japanese, which had recently launched the Sakuba. The edge the Japanese and British vessels had was clear. Both equipped 12-inch guns on a cruiser hull, compared to the Blucher's 8-inch guns, and while Blucher had a speed advantage over the Sakuba, it did not have one over the Invincible, while Invincible also carried double the amount of 12-inch guns when compared to the Japanese ship. Sakuba and Invincible were the culmination of what the Kaiser had been warning the world of over the last several years. In the January 1904 edition of the Naval Magazine, he would write an article that outlined cruisers were approaching the size, power, and cost of battleships, so if armored cruisers are going to have the characteristics of battleships, why not just build battleships? The Kaiser was not neglecting the speed advantage that cruisers had over battleships in the pre-dreadnought era, so, he came up with the idea of just combining the armored cruiser and battleship into one large vessel, namely having a large hull for mounting a powerful propulsion system, and mounting battleship-sized guns with the capability of resisting fire from those weapons, meaning thick armor. These vessels were not meant to delete the battleship concept of the fleet, as these ships would still have comparatively slightly less armor than their battleship counterparts, their armament would be slightly less powerful than their battleship counterparts, but they would have a 3 to 4 knot speed advantage over their battleship counterparts. Interestingly, State Secretary Alfred von Tirpitz disagreed with the Kaiser's idea of a new battle cruiser, namely because he favored the idea of high speed for reconnaissance, whereas the Kaiser's concept meant that the ships could carry out reconnaissance and then fill in the battle line, while Tirpitz believed that having the cruisers fill in the battle line kind of negated the purpose of constructing them, as you could just build more battleships to fill in holes. Now, it's very possible that Tirpitz did agree with the Kaiser's concept of a new warship, but was afraid of the cost that these vessels would have, as inevitably they would be nearly the same amount as a standardized battleship, and getting the Reichstag to approve that budget was difficult. Being the head of the RMA, Tirpitz's role was to design warships for the German Navy for Germany's own interest, but his job was also there to balance political considerations and financial considerations, and the political and financial side of his job often overruled the design aspect of his job. With knowledge of Invincible's existence, it became inevitable that Grosse Cruiser Project F would have to focus on matching the standard set by the British. Due to Germany's numerical inferiority in the warship count, they decided that they would go with the Kaiser's plan, as this would guarantee an individual superiority over their British counterparts. The basis for the new Grosse Cruiser would be derived from the work-in-progress Erzat Bayer Nassau class, which of course would become the Nassau class battleships. It was decided that at a minimum, the new cruiser should have a three-knot advantage over British battleships, and it should mount at least four 28-centimeter guns. As initial drafts began to take shape, confirmation came in that Invincible was going to mount eight 12-inch guns, and so the Germans decided to up the gun count between six and eight 28-centimeter barrels. The finalized outline that the Germans received was a warship calling for 6 to 8 28 centimeter guns in double turrets or two double turrets and four single turrets, 8 15 centimeter guns in casemates or in four twin turrets, 
20 8.8 centimeter guns in open mounts, and four 8mm machine guns, along with four submerged torpedo tubes. At a maximum, the hull should only be 20% weaker than that of the Nassau class. The co provisions should meet 6% of the total displacement, and the speed at a minimum should be 23 knots. On the 18th of July, 1906, as more reports were being received about Invincible's design, Turfitz called upon design work for the Nassau and the new cruiser to accelerate with the battleship mounting 12 30.5 centimeter guns and the cruiser mounting 8 30.5 centimeter guns, though, due to budgetary restrictions, the gun caliber would be knocked back down to 28 centimeters on both vessels. By late 1907, Turpitz had designs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4B. 3, 4, and 4B were immediately rejected as it had the 15 centimeter guns in twin turrets, which was no longer a part of the requirements. All 15 centimeter guns were to be in casemates. Project 1 called for a vessel of 19,500 tons. The eight 28 centimeter guns would be in two twin turrets, one forward and one aft, and then four single turrets in a hexagonal style. Project 2 called for a vessel of 19,350 tons, and it had all of the 28 centimeter guns in dual turrets. One turret forward, one aft, and then two symmetrical wing turrets. Project 2 created a vessel capable of 24 knots, which was half a knot faster than Project 1, while it was considered that Project 1 armament arrangement was superior to that of Project 2. The ships were also quite heavy for what they offered, so the decision was thrown around to drop the guns to six 28 centimeter guns in three double turrets arranged as they were on the Brandenburg-class battleships. This would save nearly a thousand tons in displacement. This suggestion was quickly thrown out as it dropped the barrel count when compared to the British counterpart. The idea of three dual turrets on the center line was not tossed out and was applied to design five, which also incorporated two single mount wing turrets in a symmetrical setup, similar to that of HMS Dreadnought. Turpitz took designs one, two, and five to the Kaiser on the 28th of September, 1906, and he would approve project two. The reason the Kaiser selected Project 2 is because, after having been refined, it was cheaper than Project 1, while it fulfilled the role of reconnaissance and filling in the battle line better than Project 5. On the 14th of October 1906, the Germans would finally receive confirmation on how the British were arranging the turrets on Invincible, and this was a turret forward, a turret aft, and two turrets amidships in a diagonal arrangement, though, initially, Admiral Turpitz ordered his designers to not focus on the same arrangement, even though a draft was made. On the 7th of November, a meeting was held where three designs would be seriously considered for construction. Project 2A, as approved by the Kaiser. Project 2B, which had the same characteristics as 2A, except the amidships turrets were diagonally arranged, as on Invincible. And then Project 5 appears once again, Though, favor for Project 5 wavers, as it was a heavier alternative, though it was also argued that the arrangement of the dual turrets was superior, as the shell hoist arrangements allowed for a higher rate of fire. By the end of the meeting, Project 2B is the one that was selected. Project 2B would be refined into Project 2B1, and these were sent off to the Kaiser, where he would approve Project 2B1. This design, when compared to 2B, incorporated a deeper torpedo defense system, which meant the torpedo bulkheads were moved inboard 2 meters, which resulted in the wing turrets being moved in 2 meters, so their shell hoist were not interfered by the bulkhead. It was finally decided to use turbines as the primary propulsion machinery, and these would be ordered from the Parsons Company in Britain for the cost of 1 million marks. These would create 36,000 shaft horsepower propelling the vessel at just shy of 25 knots. The ship's citadel was also slightly lengthened, which allowed for more space to store more ammunition. On the 22nd of June 1907, the Kaiser would sign the building order for Cruiser F, Project 2B1, aboard the cruiser Munchen. On the 26th of September 1907, 
The contract for Hall 198 would be signed at the Blomenfall shipyard. It would be laid down on the 21st of March, 1908, launched on the 20th of March, 1909, completed in late May of 1910, and commissioned on the 1st of September, 1910, as the SMS Von der The ship cost 36.5 million marks to construct, compared to the Nassau's 37.4 million marks. Even with the extreme cost that came with the hull, the Kaiser finally got his dream warship, and the Navy got an excellent unit added to its list. With that having been said, there is nothing more to add on to this topic for today. So, if you have learned something new, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.